surprise, surprise, surprise. The king is Max. <laughs> Max, uh, congratulations on a very fine performance tonight. Uh, you set all kinds of records. Most significant strikes landed in a fight, in a round. Uh, all these different things could go on and on. Did this performance surpass even your own expectations, or did you think it would go that way? No, oh, man. I, uh, I always try to set the bar, you know? I told you guys, I'm set the bar. Come, bear, come beat me. I dare you. You know, and, um, you know, I, I didn't break the records, actually. Or, Ortega actually did it for me, you know? He's taking a lot of punches, so... You know, this is this is not one sided. A guy was taking some damage, so you know, uh, you know, uh, tools to him, and uh, you know, onto the next. You know, like I said, bless Express is stopping T City. You know, all aboard. Don't miss the seat. We're going to UFC Hawaii now. Dana, take me home. I want a, a Virgin Lava Flow on the beach. So let's go. Uh, yeah. Um, you mentioned Brian's toughness. I mean, would, were you surprised that he was able to take some of those shots? You know, didn't even get a knockdown or anything like that. That he was just able to keep taking them. Not at all. You know, it's it's just in our blood. You know, it's in uh, when you watch a Hawaiian fight like BJ. You know, you see him take some shots. You see me take some shots, and you watch Mexicans. They can take some shots. You know, so it's just in his blood. It's in. You know, when when UFC say fighting is in our DNA. You know, I think he got fighting. He got really fighting in his DNA. You know, in his heritage. They just like me. So. It is what it is, you know. Like I said, it's uh, it's Shark Week, and uh, it, that's Max Week, and he got to come to the deep waters, you know. And we found out if it was sink or swim, so we, get, we got to answer the question. Do you think they made the right call stopping it after the fourth round? I, you know, I was, you know, it sucks, you know. I was on some bad calls from doctors, so I know how he feels, you know. But it is what it is. They're in there for our safety. If it was one more round, it's gonna be one more round of the same thing. So you know, the, the doctors is doing their job. And last thing for me, uh, Dana was in here earlier, and I'm sure you've been asked about it already. He wants you to go up to lightweight, and I kind of asked him. Obviously, if you did that, you'd be giving up your belt. I'm sure there's certain things in your contract that are beneficial with being a champion yeah, and yeah. stuff. So when it comes to all that, I mean, do you need some sort of assurances if you do go up, whether it's a title fight right away, uh, certain things in your contract? Is that all part of it? You look, look, Dana White is a boss. You know, the boss is looking for super fights, you know. All the UFC guys, you guys, you guys be talking about me fighting at 55 for super fights. So if it's, if it's uh, you know, everybody keep, I keep hearing the name Connor, you know, Khabib. And, uh, you know, at the end of the day, they got something to figure out. I think so. It's, some, it's after this fight, actually, right? The little press thing with that they going on. So hopefully they can figure it out. Wish the best of luck to them. And, uh, and we can sit down with Dana. We'll figure it out. Hey, we see what happens, you know, that's, that's, that's a fun fight. I, I mean, you guys watching Bet It, someone called me, Tony, so I got a bone to pick. Max, you're 16-3 and three now in the UFC, 13-fight win streak. You just tied GSP, John Jones, Demetrius Johnson, right behind Anderson Silva. Not only, not only are you the, probably the greatest featherweight ever, you might be one of the greatest fighters of all time. Does that drive you to become the greatest MMA fighter ever? Yeah, you're wrong, you know. I think I still believe the greatest featherweight of all time is Jose Aldo. And, uh, you know, when I'm 30 or 31 or his age, then you ask me if I'm the greatest featherweight of, the, of all time, if I'm still here. But, you know, at the end of the day, I just want to be the pound for pound number one. You know, I'm a champion. I'm defending my belt. Now I'm being number one. If it's up a weight class, it's up. If it's here, defending my throne. If I get to fight one of my good friends, the daddiest man on the planet for that title, bring it on, Kung Fu Panda. I got you, DC. You know, Hawaiians, we love eating, and uh, I can see him very soon. <laughs> Max, I mean, over 300 strikes landed in that fight. Like he said, you broke all kinds of records. Uh, when you're just in there, though, and you're standing in front of this guy, and you're just hitting him with shot after shot, and he just is walking forward and not falling down, what is going through your head? Man, this, this guy got just, I was just thinking, he's going to be in here for five rounds taking this much? I hope he's okay, but uh, then so be it. <laughs> it is what it is. <laughs> he's going to get damaged, you know? That's, just, that's my game plan. I take it deep waters, you know. I, like I said, if you're ready to, when you're ready to walk out that door, I'll hold your hand and walk you through that door, you know. But if not, if you're just gonna tough it out, you know, hey, tough man, good, good for you. Yeah, I mean, you were coming off the longest layoff of your career, and I think uh, you have maybe a bit of a reputation as a slow starter. But you going in there and it, you were on fire early. Uh, it felt like you found your distance really quickly in that fight. Did you, you know, did you really get into it really quickly as opposed to starting slow in your mind and what what went into the 
Yeah, you can thank my coaches for that. They let the they they loosen the leash on me on this one in like early in the round. So uh, early in the fight, you know, in the back, they tell me just be loose, just go out there and do your thing, ready, go attack. Every other fight, they're like they're holding me, you know, like a pit bull, like just pulling me back and being like, hey, hold on, relax. And then it's like a retractable one, you know. So they just keep letting go of the thumb and letting it go. But um, you know, this one they said go get it, go have fun. You know, I was. I was singing my walkout song, you know, I was talking to Ortega in there. I was talking to Joel every time I went back. I saw my son, I told him what's up in there. He told me to keep my eyes on Ortega, so it was cool. Just how good did it feel to get back? <laughs> I felt great. I felt like a Canadian, eh? <laughs> this is the 10th island. This is ridiculous, you know? Hey, you guys switched up on me on one of the rounds, though. I heard them chanting Ortega, and I was like, wow. I was like, come on, guys. And then, like, they came right back around, and it was, I don't know, it was louder. So, hey, I love you guys, 10th island. You guys, you guys are the best. Well, hey, last one for me. I know you're still hesitant to do so, but I mean, Dana White was in here and he said you may already be the greatest featherweight ever. ever. Uh, what would it, you need to do for, in your mind, that to cement for you to become the greatest featherweight ever? I just keep winning. You know? I just got to keep winning. I just got to keep doing my job, keep winning fights, and, and let you guys keep talking about it. You know? But personally for me, I think Jose still is, and uh, I'm chasing him. You know, he said he set the bar. He still got a bar. I still got to break it, and I'm setting bars for these guys. You know, people are saying that this new era, or whatever. You know, I'm setting the bar for the new era. I guess. You know, when the blessed era is here, the blessed era is gonna be in full effect. Congrats. Hey Max, congratulations on your win tonight. <laughs> Seeing uh, Brian's like performance, though, like he was just a warrior in there. Like, would you grant him another rematch in the near future? Like, do you think he deserves one? We see what happens. That's not up to me, you know. I fight whoever, you know. You guys see, uh, a bunch of my fights are short notice in here, you know. I took, I think I got like two fight, two three fights, or actually two fights that they actually let me fight on ten days. I don't care, you know. A couple hours. If Renato was ready for going one hour, I would have, I would have fought again. <laughs> if they told me, hey, Renato wants to fight, hey, <laughs> let's do it. Let's, we would, we would have did it twice. You know what I mean? But uh, that's just me, huh? That's my warrior spirit. Uh, last question is, you consider this the 10th island. Would you uh, want to come back and headline for the third time uh, here in Toronto, Canada? Uh, we see what happens, you know. I love this place. Uh, maybe uh, try the summer, is summer like this. A little, a little bit warmer, please. But uh, if, it, if it's the first week of December, hey, it's been a good week for me for the last three years. So if, uh, if it's the fourth year in a row, then so be it, you know. And look, we packed this thing out. Ariel Wani said he thought GSP was fighting tonight, so uh, it, was, it was pretty dope, man. I love these guys, man. The fans here, you guys remind me of Hawaiians. They warm, like, every, I'm walking through the underground city, which I didn't know was there until, like, midweek. We was walking outside, like, Hawaiians been like, freezing, and then out, down underneath, you could just walk with no jacket. I was like, wow, guys, we really missed, dropped the ball on this one, so <laughs> it's cool, you know. I, I'll come back for sure. I love this place. It's the 10th island, like I said. Hey, Max, the right hand, was that something that you knew going into the fight was going to be there, or was it just something that, uh, you know, when you started landing it, I'm going to stick with this? Ah, uh, you know, we, we, uh, we just in there. I felt it, you know, I was letting it go. I don't even think I threw that much right hands in my camp. We did a lot of stuff. I just switched it up in there, you know. I got the tattoo blessed on top, down going my right arm, and I was like, ah, I might as well bless you as much as you can, so... That's what happened. <laughs> and uh, you talked about the fourth round. You said you told your corner that the fourth round was going to be it. Um, that was really the time when you saw Ortega starting to back up. What did you see from him as he was weakening that round? You know, when you're in there, you see things. You know, I just, I just felt his energy dropping, energy dropping every round, every round. I, I heard his coaches talking, you know, in the first couple rounds, and he'd push, and then, you know, around, like, the third round and stuff, I heard his coaches talking, and there's no push anymore, you know. And, and then and, and when I was coming out of the third round, I told Joe, this is the round. Get ready to come in and talk to me. And then uh, when, when I didn't get the finish, I walked straight to Jordan. I was like, ah, this close. Maybe next one. And then when they called the fight, I jumped the cage. The first guy I talked to was Joe. I was like, hey, I guess I was right. <laughs> I take it back. We was there. <laughs> Congrats. Thank you. Max, after the fight, Brian went to talk to your son. Do you have any idea what he said to him? I don't know. What, what did he say, Mini Bliss? Uh, yeah, yeah, he probably wasn't listening, so... Uh, hey, the, to Brian, did Brian talk to you? My opponent? No. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh, you just gave him knuckles? Yeah, Brian's a cool dude. You know, I heard an interview of him saying that if we wasn't fighting, we can be friends. And I told him, yeah, you know, like, after whatever, you know, after this fighting thing is, is done, I'd gladly come to California and hang out with you, you know. I don't know about right now, but, like, when we all said done and fight, I see you around. Yeah, we could totally be friends. He's a cool dude, you know, so respect to him.
Are you at all bothered that Moicano didn't make weight? Not at all. Like, like you know, like, it's hard. He, he's a, he, he was like an alternate, you know? Like, how do you get hyped up to be an alternate? Well, you make weight and you can't fight? It's kind of it's kind of shitty, you know what I mean? That's a shitty feeling. So I don't know how you push through to get there. And then when I walked in, we was in the same weight cutting room. So that was kind of like, I, I wasn't awkward. Like I would have let them stay. Like they they left out of respect, I think. And that's cool. I love their team, you know. But you know, I, and at the end of the day, it was just like, how do you get up for that? You know what I mean? How do you like sit there and be like, oh, I, like hoping like he, we're fighters. If I was an alternate, I wouldn't want to hope. Him or Ortega was dropping out so I can get my shot, you know what I mean? Like, it's hard to push for something that, that's not there to just do it, you know? If you, you ever tried to cut weight, it sucks, you know what I mean? Like, I, I, like, I, I don't give him a hard time. I guarantee you give him the, the right time, the right opponent, you give him a title fight, he makes 45 for sure. Last question for me. Uh, you were supposed to fight Frankie Edgar at UFC 222. Uh -huh. Um, or hearing that you might be switching up to 155. Is that uh -huh. a name that you want to face before you move? Hey, Frank is a legend. You know, Frank is a legend. Like I said, uh, I saw Mark Henry, I mean, Mark Henry was talking, uh, talking and, I, and I told Mark Henry, hey, if, uh, if me and Frankie keep this up, we can catch up Khabib and Tony on the most misaligned fight. So, uh, but let's not do it, you know. So, but he's one of the legends. He's one of the good. You know, he got some injuries right now. And uh, if, when he figures it out, I'll be right here. I'll be right here, you know. And, if it's 55, it's 55. Like I said, you know, the boss man, the guys are trying to make super fights. And all the UFC guys in the back, I keep hearing them throwing names, you know what I mean? So we see what happens, you know, we see what happens. Uh, we got nothing but time on our side, so I'm here to stay, baby, you know. Like I said, is, is there anyone else? Step forward. Max, uh, when you look at the lightweight division, Dana said the top five fights he thought would be great for you, any of those top, uh, top guys. Which one do you think you match up with best and would make the most fun fight with when you look at Habib or Tony, uh, Kevin Lee, obviously McGregor? Uh, is there anyone you look at and you think you would have uh, the most fun uh, fighting? Uh, you know, everybody talk about the top three guys. You know, everybody talk about the Tony. Everybody wants to see me and Connor because we fought when I was a kid. You know, I mean, a long time ago. Dennis won. Dennis beat that Max too. You know, Dennis Bermuda beat that Max couple years ago so you know the top 20 featherweights in the world 30 would beat that max you know so it is what it is and then Khabib is another undefeated fighter you know but I got this niche you know I guess I just gave an undefeated fighter his first loss so maybe that one might excite me the most and we're supposed to have that one so we see what happens you know I don't know I ain't I ain't picky feed me they all can get it you know <laughs> As a competitor, because you lost to Connor, uh, would he would he have any more interest to you just so you could avenge that? You know, you're a competitor, you want to win, uh, you lost to him. Would you want to avenge that more than against somebody else? Not, you know, not really. You know, like as a competitor, I have three losses, so I want to get them all three back. Uh, as is me, but uh, I want to fight everyone. You know, whoever. As a competitor, I fight whoever. If you tell me some guy is the best. Let's do it, you know what I mean? Like, is this the best guy? I'm going to fight you then, you know? But put your dukes up, right? let's, let's, uh, let's trade blows. And lastly, why do you, what do you attribute your great improvement to from five years ago to now? Last, five years is not a long time, but uh -huh. you are a dramatically different guy. What do you attribute the improvement to? Our great coaches. I'm, a, I'm about to give you three names, write them down. They're going to go in the history book. Uh, Ryland Lazarus, Ivan Flores, and Darren Yap. The three-headed beast. These guys is animals. These guys break down a lot of stuff. Uh, you know, even my wrestling coach, Michael Nakagawa, he's a fighter. He's coming up, my brother. And um, but those those guys, those three guys, and those four guys, they 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 put it on the line for me all the time. And when it's go time, like uh, you know, quick story. It's funny when that Khabib fight, Rylan was leaving the hospital with his second-born child that day that we left to go and fight Khabib. I had to ask his wife and be, and. And his wife was like, hey, you better go up, kick ass, you know, that's, that's how much. You know, I love these guys. Those, those, those four guys right there, is, uh, they br their brains behind me. I'm just a guy. I'm just a guy doing it, but their brains putting it behind me. So, I, you know, I love those guys. Max, uh, Thursday, um, you know, you were singing along with your music and your open workout, um, and then you talked about your walkout song. So I need to know, what's the championship song? What's, what's the first thing you're playing tonight? Um, I don't know. Whatever. Many, many blessed probably have the have the songs, or we don't know. I don't know. We see what happens. You know, I played. Uh, you know, Thursday I was singing to my songs. Tonight, I don't know if you guys saw. I song. I sang to my song. This a rolly, not a stopwatch. I lied. It's actually an AP. 
But, uh, you know, give me my respect. Give it my respect. <laughs> it's cool, man. You know, shout out to Six God. What curse? Told you guys I was here to stay. You know, the Blessed Express is on the move, like I said. All aboard. Max, this just became official. Uh, with your performance tonight, you became, you passed Michael Bisbing and Frank Yeager for the most significant strikes in UFC history. Uh, you just turned 27 this week. That, that's honestly incredible. Uh, just what does that record mean to you to already own that so young in your career? That's dope. That's it. You know what I mean? These guys are legends, you know? And, and I'm chasing these guys. You know, Michael's a legend. Like I said, Frankie's a legend, man. So I'm telling you guys, I'm going to set the bar. I'm trying to set the bar. And I dare you guys to catch me. Come get me. Come. You know, if, uh, you know, this world, we already got one Max Holloway. So stop trying to be me. Be yourself. And come beat me. I dare you. How high do you think you could push that record? Oh, I can push it high. I can push it high. I want, I want it to be done fighting like mid 30s. So we got, uh, we got, we got, yeah, we got some time, baby. Hey Max, that sounds kind of messed up. But was that the most? And I think you could hear how much everyone in the arena enjoyed that fight. Was that the most enjoyable fight you've been in? Yeah, you know, I, I felt loose in there. Like I said, I was talking to Joe Rogan. I saw my son talking to him. My coaches was talking to me. I was talking back. I was talking to I was talking to Ortega in there. I was talking to everyone. You know, if someone, if I had a cell phone, I'd probably be texting someone. Who knows? You know, I was having the time of my life, man. I was, I, I missed this. You know what I mean? Like I talked about depression earlier in this week, cause uh, I love this so much, and I got, I got it taken away from me. I couldn't even train. You know, so I finally got to go in there and do my thing, and it was so fun. You know, it was so fun. You guys got to see. And uh, as far as you're concerned, where does that fight stand among uh, the best of 2018? I told you guys, Chris, you guys are so lucky. You guys, you guys, Christmas came early. You guys got a Loma and a Holloway fight on the same day. You guys welcome, you know, and uh, they're probably going to replay this card. I told you guys, they're going to replay. I'm not going to be surprised if Christmas Eve, the, this card is replayed because they did it the last three years. So you guys, you know, well, congratulations. You guys going to get like three free presents, even if you're supposed to get coal. Hey, Max, just a quick follow-up on... Um the kind of comments you made earlier in the week about, or you know, for people that are you know battling uh, depression, um, it got a lot of positive you know reaction online. Did you see any of that? Did people reach out to you after you made those comments? Yeah, a lot of people. You know, a lot of people. It's uh, it's crazy because they, you know, a lot of people forget we're humans. I'm human just like you guys, and uh, they they keep forgetting they superheroes. You know, they're just not there yet. You know, like I, everybody keep calling me champ. I was a champ before I had this. this. This doesn't make me a champ. I can put it all the way on the ground, put it on the ground, whatever you want to do. I was a champion before when I started. When I said I wanted to be a UFC, I, I carried myself as a champ, and, and that's what it is. This is, just, this is just extra. This is just something to prove to you guys. Like, look, I already knew I was a champ, you know, now right here, whatever, you know. And, and that's what I said, you know, don't be scared, you know. At the end of the day, talk to somebody. But you need yourself, you know. You got to back up yourself. You bless yourself, and don't be scared to uh, reach out, you know. Surround yourself with a great team. Like I said, I got a great, great group of guys behind me that's always behind me, and they love me, and, uh, you know, reach out to people. You know, depression is, uh, is a real thing. Congratulations. Thanks. Thank you, boss. Thanks, Max. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Congrats.